Probably not as much in the last couple of years, but probably coming up soon when the competition becomes a little bit more fierce and uh, selling homes slows down a little bit. So uh, should be a great uh, meeting for all of us today. And let me see if I can bring Cameron on the line. And Cameron, I'm going to try to promote you to panelists if that can if that works. Notice that I did it earlier, but it, for some reason you're no longer a panelist. I'll just allow you to talk in the meantime. Or at least I'll attempt to allow you to talk. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, uh, staging is one of those things that. You know, you, you can overlook it in certain markets, but when it comes to, oh, there we go. All right, good morning, Cameron. Good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you All doing? right, wonderful. All right, perfect. Good, good, good. Excellent, and so I'm gonna allow you to share your screen, okay? And yep. so you can share your screen whenever you can, or um, like I said, I think I have to promote you to panelists, but. Are you able to share your screen? Uh, let me check real quick. Join us panelists. We'll get this figured out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. We got <laughs> me You've never been a panelist before, Cameron. You're, you're moving up in the world here. <laughs> All right, while we're figuring that out, we want to, uh, oh, there you go. You did make it. <laughs> we want to welcome a lot of the new agents on the line. We've had a whole slew of new agents joining us in the last couple of weeks. So uh, very excited to have you guys with us for our Wednesday webinars. This is where we, you know, a lot of times we'll talk about, uh, you know, intra-office stuff. And we always learn about something new with respect to real estate. So uh, today, Cameron is going to go over a couple of things before we get into our staging uh, presentation. So Cameron, take it away, my friend. And Cameron, all you have to do is just uh, unmute yourself. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, okay. here's our here's our lovely here's our, our lovely ten year treasury. Yep. So um, as you can see, over the last month, we've had a pretty aggressive movement on rates. Um, but the last two days, we've had our first positive movement that we've had since the first of the year. So uh, that is good news. I do kind of expect a little bit of a correction, um, especially with the in inflation data and everything coming in. So uh, we may be looking for a little bit of a rate drop compared to where it is now. But as of today, the par rate for a 20% down purchase is a 3.5. So uh, before the first, it was more like 3% range. So that's about a half point difference, but it was a 3.75 just two days ago. So we are seeing a little bit of improvement there, um, which is obviously uh, very good to see. Um, for 10% down purchase, it's pretty much the same. And remember that we do not have any mortgage insurance on our 10% purchases. So that does save uh, your client quite a bit of money, depending on um, their credit score and everything. Um, but today, real quick, what I wanted to go over is just a couple tools for you guys. If, if you meet you know, someone at the grocery store or a new client or somebody that isn't working with somebody, I have a couple uh, alter realtors on our team here that are using basically our um, our document checklist to help them get them going. So um, we're going to go ahead and email this out to everybody when we're done. But I just wanted to kind of go over this with you guys so you can see what uh, the requirements are, how we're trying to make it, you know, basically easy for your clients and give you the ability to uh, kind of vet a client immediately by having these on hand. So we have a different checklist for every type of uh, income scenario. This is our W-2 document checklist. 
um, as you can see, basically we have everything that we need um, on this list. And this is for an, a whole underwrite approval. So this is literally everything that we would need for a W-2 client to close a loan. Um, so what we do is we like to get basically everything up front so that even before you submit an offer, we get them imported to our lender and we can immediately get you DU findings uh, to make your offers a little stronger. Or we can, right when we get that signed RPA, we can literally submit that uh, loan immediately and get your client's approval in under 24 hours. Um, so it cuts, you know, basically four or five days off of what another lender would basically have because a lot of times they wait for to ask for the stuff until they're actually um, approved. So, but as you can see, W2, it's just literally, if they own any other properties, you obviously need the mortgage shaven insurance policies. But for W2, it's super easy. Just two years of W2, uh, pay stub, driver's license, and two months bank statements. That's basically it besides, of course, the application and the bar's authorization, which I'm gonna go over with you. Um, but that is our simple W2 uh, checklist. And then we also have our self-employment document checklist. So we try to, you know, basically for every single scenario that you guys could run into, um, we've created a checklist for you to make it easier for your clients. So. A lot of the stuff is going to be a little bit repetitive, such as the mortgage payments and insurance policies, if they own any other properties, because that's normal. But for self-employed, it is a little different. Those two years of personal and business taxes, sometimes we can go off of one year. Like, let's say they just started their business and just filed taxes, but they were in the same um, line of work before they got self-employed. We can go off one year. And then this is... a. Uh, uh, profit and loss statement. This is an overlay that came around around COVID time. I'm hoping that they get rid of this, but as of right now, it's not looking like they're going to. But usually, if your client has QuickBooks, it's very easy to get a profit and loss statement. And we, all, we always walk them through that to try and make it easy. Uh, three months uh, business bank account statements. This basically, they line up with the profit and loss statement and then your driver's license. So those are basically the four big themes for self-employed we try to make self-employed very easy compared i mean having basically four important documents to close a self-employed lo uh, loan is is very very good compared to a lot of lenders who might ask for a whole another handful of things so um, but that is our self-employed document checklist and then also we've got a retired uh document checklist so if you have a client that's retired and maybe wants to buy a property a lot of times that income, you can kind of be like, man, what should I show? Because their income's a little different. Sometimes they're on a fixed income. Sometimes they're working on stuff with uh, stock portfolios. So once again, this stuff, repetitive mortgage statements and insurance, but um, they can do two years of taxes. And we look at any rental income, IRA income or capital gains. Um, so they don't have to send all those documents. We'll just look at the taxes and see what we need. And if we need anything else, then we'll ask for it. Uh, Social Security award letter pension award letter, and these are all if applicable because not every single person is going to have the same income, right? Um, two months of bank statements, driver's license. So basically, these are the, the actual income docs that we need, but there it's pretty easy for, for retired too. Basically, you get the two years of taxes if they file taxes still, and you figure out exactly what you need. If they don't file taxes, you know that their income is basically just Social Security and maybe pension if they pay the taxes out of the pension immediately. Um, one more thing that is really nice to have is our gift letter. So we can basically, you guys could have this on your desktop and anybody who may be getting a gift from family, you can have them fill this out and get it signed and everything from, uh, whoever's going to, the family member that's going to give the gift letter and you can submit that with your offer. So it looks a lot more, uh, professional and it's verifiable funds. Basically, the only thing you need is this gift letter and two months of bank statements from whoever is handing out the uh, funds or uh, gifting the funds to their family. So this is really nice. Looks good on an offer and makes it a little bit more uh, legitimate with a signature and everything. Um, I like that. Other than that, yep, yep. And then other than that, our super easy um, application, we have it literally auto-filled. So you could literally, you know, basically send this to your client and they could 
chill it out on their computer, which is very nice. They just save it as a PDF. And then uh, there's no printing or, or writing with a pencil or anything required on that. And it's a little easier than like an online application. This is literally just two pages long. And most of these boxes literally are meaningless if they don't have a bunch of properties. They don't even need to worry about this. Um, so very easy, literally takes probably five minutes, whereas your average online application probably takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And then last but not least, we've got our borrower's authorization. Basically, once we get this, we have permission to run credit and look at their income and basically make sure that everything is, is good on, on your guys' end. So um, feel free. We're going to go ahead and email this out to everybody and make sure if, if you uh, are, you know, want to get your, have a client that isn't working with anybody and you want to get them going super quick, we want you to have the firepower to do that. And I already have some realtors that are doing this and it's working out great because we can literally get them submitted. Basically, as soon as we get all that stuff, get them submitted, get you findings in a matter of, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, so powerful stuff. But uh, that's pretty much all I have for today. Just wanted to share that with you. And I'm sure that uh, Kevin will get all this out to you. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to um, contact me as always. Yeah, that's great, Cameron. So what I'll do, I'll do a couple of different things. I'll get those uh, uploaded to the website, the Clearview Mortgage website, and we'll also, you know, send those out to everybody. But that's a really good idea to have those ready on your desktop. So very, very cool. Nice work, Cameron. All right, great. And, and uh, easiest thing to do if you need uh, Cameron services is just reach out to him. Of course, just go uh, send him a, an email, Cameron at cvmloans.com. So he is ready to help you guys out. So let me pull up my little graphic for today's webinar. So today, of course, we're talking about staging. And staging is, it's important, especially if you're trying to break into the, uh, the luxury real estate market. Um, and a couple other things too. So staging doesn't have to, these days, staging doesn't have to be complete and total staging um, with actual furniture, with moving things around, with adding plants, all that good stuff. There also is some virtual staging companies. And so that might be a better uh, uh, solution for some of the, the lower price points. Um, even if you are trying to break into that upper echelon, um, that'll at least help you out a little bit. So why is staging important? So staging is important because first of all, uh, real estate is a massive uh, uh, transaction for most people. <laughs> so for most people, it'll be the largest transaction that they do, you know? Um, so you have to, you know, approach that with that kind of mindset. And so both selling and uh, for, the, for the mindset of the seller, as well as the buyer. You know, for the for the seller, you want to say, "Hey, I want to you know get maximum price for your for your property, and I want to present it in the best possible way, right?" So um, it's a it's a psychological thing as well. So home staging is also beneficial because um, buyers don't want to really see all the work that needs to be done before they move into the home. You know, we've all had listings where. You know, the person's a borderline, uh, you know, hoarder <laughs> and there's just stuff everywhere. There's clutter everywhere. Well, unfortunately for the buyer or the person that's, you know, viewing this, they have to use a lot more mental work to, you know, uh, imagine this, uh, this home in the way that they're going to make it, you know? So um, it's, it's really a visual kind of psychological uh, thing that we're dealing with, right? So this is kind of a cool uh, little stat here. So according to the 2021 Profile of Home Staging report from NAR, 47% uh, of buyers agents said that staging affected most buyers' view of a home. So that's a pretty, you know, so almost half of buyers agents said that staging affected the home. And I would have to say, um, it would be more if everybody staged homes. <laughs> so uh, we all know that that doesn't happen, right? So the report also found that 82% of buyers agents say staging makes it easier for the buyers to visualize the property as their future home, right? That's what we just talked about. 
So uh, according to the report staging, the living room was found to be very important to 46% of the virus, followed by the master bedroom, 43%, and the kitchen at 35%. So if you're just going to, uh, you know, do a few of the, of the, the rooms in the, in the home, those are the, the most important ones. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense in the world, of course. So according to NAR, um, most common rooms that are staged living room, kitchen, owner's bedroom, and dining room. Um, of course, time and money determine the level of staging that is practical for your home. Um, obviously, budget, uh, what the home is going to be sold for, all those things factor into this. But um, at, at a minimum, the home should be clean. Um, you know, you don't want to have stuff all over the place. You know, you really want to make sure that when you're taking these pictures of the home, the home is very, very clean. You know, there's as much clutter as possible is gone. Some houses, as we know, are just, you know, they're not, you're, you're never going to declutter them unless you move all the stuff out of the house, right? So that's all uh, really important stuff. So the median amount of, of home or of money spent on home staging was between 1500 bucks and all the way down to 300 bucks when a selling agent handled the task. So we actually do have um, some agents that are pretty darn good at staging. And they, you know, they basically, uh, you know, tout that as one of their services, right? So I know agents that, you know, have a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, fake plants and, you know, they have their little, uh, their staging go-to stuff that they bring in, right? So not a bad idea, especially for the lower price points is maybe have, you know, your own uh, stage, staging stuff. So in this whole 12 home staging tips, one, uh, number one, clean, declutter, of course, depersonalize, right? So the buyer needs to envision themselves in the home. So pictures of, of families and keepsakes and refrigerator art from the kids, you really need to get rid of all that stuff. So you want it to be slightly less personalized. You want it to be homey and, you know, comfortable and all that stuff is very important. But, you know, kids artwork and stuff probably get away or probably get, uh, make sure that that stuff's not out. <laughs> right. So uh, focus on fresh a couple of new potted plants. You know, like I said, even fake plants, you know, they just you know, they make the living space look a little bit more inviting. Right. So not a bad idea to do that. Uh, define the rooms. So we've all been into homes that were, you know, you walk into each room and it's just, you know, absolute, you know, uh, clutter of different, you know, ideas <laughs> and different themes and different colors. So, you know, if you can, you know, each room has a single defined purpose, that's a much in a, in a single kind of defining uh style, right? That's going to be a little bit more uh, conducive for the buyer to be able to see themselves in that home and what they could probably do with it. Um, wallpaper and paint. This is a tough one. Everybody has different opinions. Wallpaper is um, it's really making a comeback. So, but it's very personalized, right? So if you have the chance probably want to strip off some of that wallpaper and just get a nice, you know, neutral color. Um, obviously best not to paint over the wallpaper. <laughs> that's a total, uh, you know, cheap way to do things. You don't want to do that. That's cutting corners. So wallpaper and paint, just if it's, if it's a kind of a wild wallpaper or some, you know, orange or some, you know, kind of radical colors, you may want to um, do some painting over those things or removing the wallpaper, right? Uh, flooring, just make sure, you know, I mean, there's not much you can do. Um, so make sure that it's at least clean, get the carpets cleaned, you know, you just don't want really outdated and cheap looking stuff, if at all possible. And we'll get into, you know, the virtual stuff in a second here. Uh, lighting, definitely take advantage of the home's natural light. We always recommend using a professional photographer. Uh, we've got a few to, to uh, recommend. We'd like to use Preview First. 
our pal Paolo Bian Biancali over there is a really good guy. And uh, they, he has a team of awesome, awesome photographers that all use Photoshop. They know how to use Photoshop and they'll accent the home's natural light. So those are really important as well. Furniture, yikes, this can be just a, a, a nightmare. So some, sometimes you walk into a, a listing and just, you know, the furniture is awful. So um, again, not much you can do unless you're spending the, the big dollars and having a complete staging company come in um, or do the virtual staging. Uh, walls and ceilings cracks in the walls, ceilings, red flags for buyers because they may kind of indicate foundation problems or settling, uh, all that fun stuff. So, you know, if the, if the place does have, have foundation problems, you'll need to either fix them or alert the buyers to them, you know? So um, it looks bad, right? If you have cracks and stuff like that, it'll definitely scare off your buyers. So. Uh, make sure all those things are fixed and you know the cause of those things. Uh, exterior, this is a huge one. Um, making sure that the exterior and the curb appeal is really good looking, right? So you want to make sure that everything's looking nice on the outside. Mow the lawn, you know, clean up any trash, um, you know, piles of junk. <laughs> we've, we've seen some pretty radical stuff. So you want to make sure that you make the exterior will look as good as possible. And of course, you know, the, the pictures will, will, uh, will look much better if you do that. Final touches, just for any open houses or showings or picture taking, uh, make sure that all the staging efforts have the maximum impact. Just a few last minute touches. Sometimes you can bring in a, a, you know, a colleague or a friend or a family member, get another set of eyes on it and just say, hey, you know, what else would look good? So little final touches is also just a good thing to think about. So those are, you know, the actual kind of staging uh, 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 tips. But let's take a look. There are a lot of different staging companies. So I want to take a look at some of the staging companies that are available to you guys. And first of all, once you have, you know, really good images, here is uh, one of Ana Chavez's uh, single property websites. This looks nice, right? They're taking advantage of the, of the lighting. This is a, you know, a $425,000 price point, but look at her imagery. It looks awesome, right? And so we wanna make sure that we, we present our single property websites the best we can because she also sells multi-million dollar homes. And you know she wants to make sure that her buyers and sellers know how she markets her properties and she markets them in a very uh, professional manner. So let's first of all, let's take a look at uh, a company called Premier Home Staging, and they're based in Southern California, but they do have uh, offices all over. So this is some really, really good staging. You know, they come in, you know, they do, they have their own uh, kind of uh, all different styles that they can bring in, right? So this is, you know, stuff that they bring in, and I think their services are about 1500 bucks. When I contacted them, I believe it was just about 1500 bucks. So, um, you know, not cheap, but well worth it if you're selling a multi-million dollar property, right? So they have these different kind of styles that you can choose from, which is really cool. Um, that's my virtual one. Uh, SoCal 3D Spaces. This is a really cool uh, company that is operating mostly in Southern California, but they do 3D tours, floor plans, HD photography, virtual staging, all the different stuff. So uh, what is great about using uh, some of these companies that do both virtual staging and actual staging is in certain cases, they'll do a combination of the two and it may uh, end up saving you quite a bit of money. They may, you know, come in and say, hey, you know, let's just stage the living room, you know, and then we'll virtual stage, you know, some of the bedrooms. So that could be a really, really good uh, option for some of the agents that are operating on a budget 
or you haven't really used that many of these, these companies, right? Um, another one is Mantra Home Staging and Design. They are based in uh, Los Angeles and they also have an, a, uh, a new office in, in San Diego. So these guys also really good uh, staging, professional, it looks good. Um, they, they've done you know, high-end homes, they know what they're doing. Um, so I recommend checking these guys out as well. Some of their stuff is spectacular. So again, it just makes these images from your single property websites and your flyers, it makes that just absolutely pop, which is so key. And then this company, uh, Why Not Homes, is uh, virtual staging. So if you just want the virtual staging, these guys are pretty uh, inexpensive uh, uh, choice because 28 bucks a photo. You know? So maybe you just need a couple of them, a couple of the rooms restaged, right? And so you can see some of their, uh, some of their examples of just before and after. We have an empty space. And then this looks more homey. It looks like I can, you know, uh, visualize myself in there. So really, really cool that we can do some of these things for inexpensive. So that is about all I have for you guys today. I'm going to include our, my, uh, my notes, and I'll also make sure that you guys get all of the different uh, graphics and stuff that uh, Cameron put out as well. So guys, Thank you for spending time with us on the webinars, and we look forward to having you guys on the webinar next week. Next week, we will be going over compliance with Lauren Nowak, and so I hope you guys, it's a very, very important webinar, so I hope you guys join us then. Get out there, make it a great week and a productive week, and we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye-bye.